Welcome to the Heidi Thorne Show. I'm your host, Heidi Thorne, and in this podcast, I share my real world self publishing and small business experience with you. Before we get started, I just want to remind you to like, comment, share, follow, and subscribe. Now, let's get on with today's show. I thought this would be a good time for us to talk about the various types of book binding options that you have available to you in self publishing so that you can decide which one is right for you. The first type of bookbinding we'll talk about is hardcover, often referred to as case binding. Now, as an example, I'm using one of my favorite books, Picturing and Poeting by Alan Fletcher. And the reason I also chose it, other than it being one of my favorite books, is that it clearly shows the construction of a case-bound hardcover book. You'll notice that there are little tiny booklets all strung together here. It's not printed page one to the end in sequence. There are separate little booklets that are pulled together and there's a reason for that. When they construct this, what they do is they stitch those or fasten all of those little tiny booklets together and the reason they do that is so that it will lay flat. If you open the pages here, you'll notice that the spine portion of it flexes to fan out the pages. So that's why when you see it turned over, it lays pretty flat. And I say pretty flat because it's not Let's look at uh, one of the other features of uh, this case-bound book. You'll notice that there are super heavy covers on the front, back, and spine. And it is held together by the covering material. Now, in this case, the cover was printed on the covering material before the book was constructed. Let's look at a different case-bound book. This is one of my other favorite authors, Seth Godin, uh, his book, Lynchpin. You can also see, although it's very, very tight, the tiny bits of uh, uh, signatures or those little booklets that are all strung together. It's very tight. This binding is extremely tight. Probably a lot more uh, automation was involved in that, but yet it has that durable front and back cover and the spine as well. Now you'll notice on the on both books, there's the covering material dents in a little bit at the spine and that's so you don't crack the cover so that the cover actually opens. But this one, uh, the cover uh, large is not printed on the book itself. It is printed on a dust jacket which is a paper covering for the book. These days, the dust jacket serves as like a, uh, almost a marketing tool, because look at this book. This, even though the material is the same, it's just a plain cover with nothing too exciting on it. The exciting cover is the dust jacket. But as you'll see, now this one with even being tighter fastening at that spine, it, I mean, it, it doesn't even lay flat at all. So don't choose a hardcover just because you think that it's going to automatically lay flat. You choose a hardcover because it's going to get a lot of wear and tear. And this is why they're great for children's books and other books that are going to get a lot of handling. Let's move on to Perfect Bound. I don't know if there's anything really perfect about it, but it is a very inexpensive, but usable format. This is what's called a trade paperback. And this is what is produced currently with Kindle Direct Publishing and some of the other self-publishing platforms uh, when they do a paperback version. Now, unlike the case binding, this has the signatures or the pages are 
connected directly to the spine. There is no case around it. The cover itself is a paper or card stock. And it wraps around that and then it is glued on the spine at both the back and then just a hair into the front and back covers so it doesn't fall off with wear. It does not lay flat at all. <laughs> not at all. And so if your intent is to have a book that lays flat, Perfect Bound is not for you. However, it is a very inexpensive type of binding. If you want to do Perfect Bound because you're bound by budget restraints, you might want to think about going with a larger format. So this is the proof for my Daylily coloring book. And of course, being a coloring book, I do want it to lay flatter for people to color in. So what I did was I went with a larger format. Uh, this one is eight and a half by 11. And I've also used that larger page size or what they call trim size. The trim size is the actual final dimensions of the book. I use that larger trim size for my 101 business writing prompts book where I want people to write in. So as you can see, it does help it lay flat. It is not perfect, okay? As you get towards the front or the back of the book, it does tend to flip, flip over and close, but it does help the reader or user have a more of a lay flat experience. So that is perfect bound. I also have to say that it is dramatically less expensive than hardcover. For example, on this Kindle Direct Publishing hardcover beta feature that I am testing out right now. My cost, which gets deducted off of the price before I get my royalty, is three times what it is for Perfect Bound. So it, it, it can be double or triple to do case binding. That's why Perfect Bound is so popular because it is much, much less expensive. Now let's look at Saddle Stitch. This is a Saddle Stitch book. I don't know if you can exactly see it. I'll get it a little closer here, but you can actually see where the staples are. This is kind of an older book, so um, it's harder to see where the, the staples are because the edges have come off, which is a problem with uh, some uh, saddle stitched books, but it does have a staple or two at the spine. Saddle stitch books lay flat and the stitching for it is right in the middle so you can see it through the book. Sometimes saddle stitching is done for uh, children's books because it is a less expensive option than hardcover or case bound books, uh, but it would have a much more temporary use and it will get banged up a lot. However, be aware that not all companies do saddle stitch books. For example, Kindle Direct Publishing doesn't. Lulu and Book Baby do offer that. You have to look around. And it may not be that much of a difference between that and Perfect Bound. So do consider what the final use of the book is before you decide to go saddle stitch. And the other um, thing about saddle stitch is that you really can't have a whole lot of pages. You probably can't go more than, I'm going to say, 25 40 pages, something like that. It depends on the weight of the paper and, and all of that. So it's really for very short books uh, that have a more temporary use. Now let's look at spiral binding. This is a classic plastic spiral bound book. And they're used a lot for textbooks and things that have to lay flat. For example, I taught computer 
uh, software classes. And all of those textbooks were these big uh, spiral bound books. And their advantage is that they do lay flat, perfectly flat. And so that's why uh, people like them, authors like them for things like journals. However, they're extremely fragile. I can, look, I can even, I can even mess with this, this binding with my, with one hand, with one hand. And the problem with them is that on a spiral bound like this, do you see this little hook here? That's going to hook on everything. And what it'll do is it'll start tearing out the binding. It'll start tearing the pages. So when you have books like this, sometimes your fulfillment option, whether that might be fulfillment by Amazon or some other fulfillment house, they may ask you to shrink wrap the books before you send them to the warehouse for distribution, just because it's so fragile that uh, the books will get damaged. And that means more expense for you. Let's look at a couple of other spiral bindings. This one is a little tiny uh, journal here. It's a metal uh, type of spiral, and it does have a lot more durability. It still has a little bit of problem with catching on things, so they still may ask you if you do a metal spiral binding uh, to shrink wrap the book before you send it for distribution. Best one, and certainly cheap, is what's called a comb binding, which is kind of a spiral binding. Same type of principle for uh, spiral bound books, except the, the holes are a little bit different. You can get a machine to do this at an office supply store, or office supply stores might even offer that as part of their their printing service. The problem with them, just like with other spiral bindings, is that it's extremely fragile. And these things get caught all the time, all the time. Early in the self-publishing era, this was all we had available. We were thrilled to be able to get a self-published book that was comb bound. I mean, that was our only option if we didn't want to pay so much money for it. Luckily, we're in the era of uh, perfect bound paperbacks through like Kindle Direct Publishing and Ingram Spark and um, Book Baby and Lulu. So luckily, we're in that era. But this one, it's very cheap, uh, but it is extremely fragile. And just like with other spiral bindings, if you do decide to go with it, they may ask you to shrink wrap the books before it goes to distribution. Hope you found that helpful. If you did, Please rate, review, and subscribe to The Heidi Thorne Show on whatever podcast platform you like to use. I'm on all the major ones, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Podbean. Pick your favorite. I'm probably there. If you like the video better, just subscribe to my Heidi Thorne YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so that you get an alert when a new video is available. I would appreciate it if you would share the audio podcast or the video with your friends on social media. If you'd like to see my self-published books, they are available on Amazon, Audible, and Apple Books. All you have to do is type in my name on any one of those sites, Heidi Thorne, and my author page will come up and you'll see a list of all the available books there. If you'd like to connect with me, my website is very simply HeidiThorne.com, Instagram, and TikTok at at Heidi Thorne. Thank you so much for listening and for your support. I look forward to talking with you again in the next episode, and in the meantime, have a great day.